So we look at someone like Tim Burton. Tim Burton's a really interesting example of a filmmaker who I would argue is much better at building worlds than telling stories. <laughs> I'm continually frustrated. I walk out into Tim Burton's movies really excited and walk out really disappointed, <laughs> precisely around that axis. And I come to realize that if I could just evaluate his worlds, he, he's one of the best world builders in contemporary cinema. He simply doesn't know how to end a movie, <laughs> right? He does, and there's only a couple of his early films have a, a narrative structure that's worthy of the amount of attention, the detail that goes into the world. But at a moment when the art world is beginning to take up this notion of world building as well, Tim Burton becomes the bridge from popular culture into the museum space. And the fact that LACMA in LA did a Tim Burton exhibit, which is now touring, which combines his sketches with some of the artifacts from his films, we're seeing the art world begin to come to grips with uh, the idea that world building can be an aesthetic function all of its own. That would certainly extend to someone like Matthew Barney and the Cremaster series. is really about ritualized adding uh, uh, worlds that are added up over time, not rationally described, but emotionally experienced and ritualized ways, sensual, sensuous ways. But that's really the heart of Matthew Barney's work. And we can talk about Henry Darger's uh, rediscovery as a, a primitive artist who built elaborate narratives with complex worlds within it, and the fact that the art world has had to come to grips with that as an important ex experiment in contemporary art and storytelling, says again, the art world is going to have to embrace this idea of world building as legitimate artistic practice. And I think if we look at the major exhibitions over the last decade, we're seeing them moving further and further along that path.